Hey, hey, so I'm back with another video, and this time I'm going to be testing an impeller design. Uh, so with this one, the air goes on the top, and then it gets compressed, and then also the profile of the blades, you can probably see, because I got it pretty thin now, so it comes out very shallow, and then it almost goes vertical at the bottom. And uh, yeah, this printed actually really well. So printed it upside down like so. And I used support material on this side. And when I was done, all I had to do was just peel it off and then just take a razor blade and just clean up this very, the very bottom. And yeah, it worked out really well. So like on the inside, um, the side of the blade where the air is going to get compressed, compressed is all really smooth in there. So that should work really well. Um, here is the comparison of the old one. So this one is slightly bigger. So more possibility to destruction. And I also have a thicker. Uh, and that's no good actually because so I have a six millimeter end mill on here. So if I put this one on the original. So a lot of a lot of space underneath. This new one not so. So when this one goes on, it's a little tighter. So yeah. Uh, what I'll do is uh, depending on how well this design works, I will uh, cut an indent into the top here so I can Slide it on. Let me uh, put my phone down. That was a two-handed job. Um, so when it goes on, it'll fit right up onto the nut to the very top, and then that should alleviate the problem of the space. So let's uh, let's try it out. I don't know how. I don't have a way of testing like if it's going to produce any more. Um, airflow or anything, um, but I don't know. We have the chips here, but let's just see if it'll just to see if it'll survive. Uh, I've also made the uh, sidewalls here for the ducting. This is thinner tau now, so like this one was in like two and a half, <coughs> two and a half millimeters, and then this one is like one millimeter now. So not a lot of strength on the side, and uh, who knows? Who knows what will happen? So let's close this thing up. I need to get a handle up here. One-handed. Oh, what do we miss? Let's just put that there. Anything else we miss? No. This is how this goes, like so, works really well. Uh, yeah, I haven't, now let's just run it. So straight up to 24,000 RPM again. There we go. It's quite a lot louder. Just for comparisons, let's put the other one on too. You can see how much that thing flaps around and compare the volume level.
Yeah, it's definitely a lot wider. Let's uh let's try moving the gantry around and see. So we just like to move new chips around. There we go, nice and tight. So this one definitely blows. So I think all that's left now is to uh, just make it so this fits on all the way and I think this is a, a winner. So me in the future here, uh, I'm just going through and editing this video and I just wanted to show you the uh, how loud on this graph here, the audio from this uh, original fan so yeah it's definitely a lot more. so that's how loud it is and then look at that right there yeah so that's that's the difference in terms of how loud they are because i don't think they're going to show up well on uh, on the actual audio in the so i definitely think that this one outperforms uh this one here so yeah what i'll do now is uh let's look at both of them in CAD and you can see close out better of how this thing is you know been designed and everything all right so in CAD here's uh what it looks like let me uh go to before we combine it so I can show just the impeller blades so that's what it looks like the thickness here is uh 0.8 millimeters and uh yeah it looks really thin up here and it's just that's because it's been cut off and yeah after I combine it I just chop out the bottom but I think uh, just because all of this part on the bottom here is is gonna interfere with cutting I'll have to just redesign the thing so uh, the nut which is right, like which goes in here will will sit in deeper, and then there'll be a, a gap on the top here. And uh, I can show you how uh, how you go about designing stuff like fans and stuff in SolidWorks. So um, in this case, I came, I started out with a revolve and just made a basic shape, and then you know you always want an axis. And uh, just the beginning is just a matter of just cutting out your shape and and it's pretty simple stuff like this can be done in any software and uh, to work on making a single blade uh, this one is made out of a, a few sketches so here is a uh, a 3d sketch on uh, of a spline on this surface and then one on this surface and then this loft is a combination of uh, uh, another sketch here which represents the this top spline this top curve and then there's a another one down here which looks like it's like a linear thing but it, it's a spline as well and uh, that'll give you the basic shape of the single blade and this is a surface it's got no thickness so uh, in order to 
uh, turn it into a, uh, a blade, a propeller blade, we have to extend it. So we have to extend it out. And that's how that looks. That blue area was uh, the extension. And once you extend it like that, and you can thicken it. So this is thickened by uh, points, well, 0.4 it's on both sides, so 0.8 millimeters. And then uh, that's pretty much the shape. And then you can just start doing some Boolean operations. So this one here, if I go before it, so it's just, you're just chopping it down. So if I show the sketch on this one, it's just a rectangle and then chopping it up. And, and then we just got to chop the inside and the outside again. So there's the one for the inside, which is just the the circle mapped or referenced and then this one on the outside is a revolve cut which is just taking this shape which is referencing this surface here and just cutting it and so after the final cut we're left with a single fan blade and then uh, yeah circular pattern it so in this case I used seven, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And <clears throat> yeah, so seven and then combining it, there's our combined mesh and then putting the fillet on all those inside edges. It's probably not very important, but it might help with uh, 3D printing some of those uh, inside corners. And then finally, at the end, I threw on a, uh, a uh, revolve cut to, uh, my intention with this is to see if it'll direct the flow. So the air comes in and then the first place it can escape is on the inside. So what I'm hoping is it'll, it'll help compress all this air down to the center where the end mill is. And yeah, that's my thinking with that. I don't know if it's gonna, would work or not. Uh, that all would change with uh, making the uh, um, this area here that, that the nut fits into, lowering it down. So I would have to then go back to this design. And this would basically look the way it is. And then this top here would be uh, cut out and you know the, the inner diameter uh, on the top would be pushed out a bit. So that's how you make a fan or an impeller in this case. I just wanted to jump into uh, Slicer here, uh, Persis Slicer in this case, and show you what the uh, support material looks like. So if I go down by layers, you can see this is the this is the very bottom layer uh, of the fan when it's upside down, and by printing it this way, like this is probably a really good way to print these fans regardless, is uh, your your very first layer that is kind of like the knife edge of each blade it stays really strong because it's it's printed right on the floor and this impeller uh, if we jump back into here so the angle there so this angle here is this is really difficult to print so like you you never like it's such an overhang it's just it's just going to look horrible so flipping it over yeah, you do have the overhang, but the overhang is so low to the, the ground now. And uh, with a bit of adjustment on how the support material is laid out, uh, you can make it so it just supports, what is this, like the first 40 layers or so. And uh, it, it comes off really easily. And then the rest of this, like the rest of these layers, they just, you know, they don't need support material. So yeah, this is, that's a good way to do it. Here's how that uh, first layer looks like on the actual 3D print. So it prints like that. And then you can see here, every single one is like, it's like a knife edge. It's a single layer. And that probably helps quite a little bit, quite a lot with uh, the turbulence. So as it cuts through the air, uh, it's not creating any turbulence. and and in turn also, because it's printed upside down, this is just very, very th smooth in here. So that's probably going to be it for this video. Uh, I think in the next video, 
uh, I started modifying these calipers. Uh, I've made just with a chunk of steel. Uh, what I'm planning on doing is uh, taking an extension bar like this piece of three quarter inch steel here and I'm going to mount it to these calipers and then that way I can square my CNC machine uh, by using, uh, well, basically measuring the relative length of the diagonals. So this should be a very accurate way of doing that. And uh, yeah, and then this, you know, the extension will, will mean that I can pretty much make a big giant square on the majority of the spoil board and squared very, very accurately. All right, so that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.